Hello, this is Marianne Penna coming to you from SeemsToBeSo.com. Today I'm going to show you how to work with text in Electric Quilt. As you, know, as you may have read on my blog yesterday, Joan Kawano of Moose Stash Quilting and I are going to do a signature swap. And so um, I've put together some blocks and auditioned some different text and decided to show you how I went about doing that today with my tutorial. I had planned something else for today's tutorial, but um, I will hold that off until next month. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see here, this is one of the little um, signature blocks that I was playing with. This is in my quilt layout. I have um, just taken one little block and put um, text in the various shapes of the block and then tried having a look at it as a quilt itself. By opening my sketchbook, you can have a look at the different uh, layouts I have already tried. This was my original one. I love the block for this, but this is one of those blocks where it needs an inset seam. And so I know I would not do this for a signature quilt unless I were to, t unless you take and split up some of those little pieces into triangles where you can then avoid that inset seam. That's something I'm more likely to do just because I don't really like inset seams. I, I, I dislike having to say that I dislike anything, but you know, there are things that we all dislike about quilting. I mean, a lot of people dislike putting the binding on, and yet, while it's not my biggest love of quilting, um, I, I don't mind doing the binding, because once you get to the point of the binding, you might as well finish it. Now, it's, with the text in this project, it's difficult to see it in your sketchbook, but when you put it on your quilt layout, you can see it a little bit better. Well, you could. As you can see, if I, if I zoom in, I can see it. It's not as easy, and this is actually a larger font. So if you used a, a, a single font that didn't do any applique, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to see it as well. Even, even with this one, it's difficult to see because it really wants you to put something bigger in there, but you don't always have that option because you're trying to fit within the confines of the block and its size. So those are things you have to keep in mind when you're adding text in Electric Quilt. I'm going to switch over here to the block work table and um, I was just <laughs> working on my row and I guess that's why this is still showing here. I will um, switch this and be right back. Okay, essentially speaking, I just changed my block widths and my snaps and my um, graph paper cells so that they fit more within the confines of a block. So essentially speaking, when you're, look, when you're in Electric Quilt and you're looking for blocks, you want to go to your block library, which is under your library tab. And you can start looking through the different types of blocks that there are. If I were doing, um, if I wanted to do something really elaborate, I would go ahead and do this, but for me, um, I'm going to ask people to just do a simple block, and that way if I want to add something around my box, then I have that option down the road. Thus, you don't have to go to all that work, you can let me do the rest, and you just do the basic of a signature block. So that means you just need to kind of look through your blocks to try and find something. Now you want to keep it simple so you know that you're not really going to do something like a Dresden plate or um, big major stars um, and that kind of thing. And these really don't lend themselves well to signature type blocks. You want to look for things like four patches, 
um, single block that you can add to your sketchbook easily. Even something as nice as a pinwheel. I love pinwheel blocks. I think they're very pretty and they, they create great effects in a quilt. Even something like this could be a signature block because you could put your signature along the triangle and uh, the pinwheel and it will look like it it's revolving around when you do the the quilt because obviously you can put your name here and you put your city here if you have a blog you could put your blog name here you could put the date here and that way it fills all the squares with text that allows it to give that additional pinwheel effect so you this is why you want to just really try and stick with these types of blocks. Very simple, very easy. Don't do something elaborate like this. You want to keep them simple in this line. And really when you, and I, it's getting into very, <clears throat> when you do something like this type of block, you really only need this part of the block because this is just the same block as this one and these two are they're all the same block they're just turned differently when you're facing them together it's the same as this it's just one block and then just turned various ways to incorporate it um, I'm trying to think of some of the other places as you can see you can also go through some of the picture blocks and see if you can find anything that you like. Simple blocks are just that. They're meant to be simple. You're going to find some in here as well. It just depends on where you look. You have many options just in your basic default electric quilt. I, I still haven't installed all of my stuff yet for electric quilt, so all my add-ons are really not installed. So this is basically what my sketchbook looks like at this point. These are blocks I chose. This is the a, a kind of a look like one for the one I showed you in my quilt layout. As you can see I, I, I thought it would be fun to do the fabric bolts. You could put your name along the bolt and um, it looks it could look like a book in a way. It, to me I thought these were bookshelves until I read the name of the block which is fabric bolts so it's kind of fun in that respect because they kind of look like books and if you put your name and all that here it will look like you're naming your books you could do a sewing machine the name of your your little company could be your name and and your decorative area could be your date and your city and that kind of thing hearts are fun to do you know you don't have to think that it has to just be a normal square. There's spools and pieced hearts. You know, there's just all kinds of really fun options. Even half log cabins or a full log cabin if you wanted to go that route. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to choose a basic block here to get started with and I need to go to my sketchbook to do that. So, we'll look for that basic block. Here we go, we'll just zoom in on that one. And it's right here on my easy draw table. And so I'll go to color, and there it is. I am thinking I cannot do this on this table because even in the color there's no option for text. So <clears throat> what I have to do is come over here to my quilt work table and work on this from there. So I'll set it up to do just one block. I want it to be four inches. You don't want a big a really big huge block and I just want one block. Okay so I'm I'm ready to go and I can take and I can put this pieced block on my table 
Okay. I should have just made a new layout. And so here we go. I just want this to be four inches. And then I'll go to the borders tab and I will delete my border out. And then I'll go to layer one where I want to add my squares. And I can see I have all my squares here. Just gonna pull the square over here. And now I'm ready to add the text. In order to add text on this, cannot add text on layer one. You have to do it on layer two. And this is your text button. Now it's possible that you might have to use your menu. I removed a bunch of my options so I could show it to you here. It's possible you might have to click on your little menu oh, here to have it show the add remove buttons. And if you need to add the text, it's going to be right here in your menu. You would just check it. If I want it to disappear, I would uncheck it. If I want it to reappear, I would just recheck it so it will add itself again. Okay, so let me reset my, my window and I'll be right back. Okay, so to add text, you're going to take and click on the text tool and it's going to come up with applique text. There's no way around this in electric quilts, so you just have to um, um, deal with that in that respect. And what it will do is it's going to give you the applique look. If you have EQ Stitch, you could then take this over to EQ Stitch and convert the applique to a single line or, you know, a little um, triple type stitch for machine embroidery. But if you don't have machine embroidery, it's going to show you applique text. The idea here is that we're just auditioning our signature to get an idea of what we want to do and how we can play with it and such. So. <clears throat> we're going to wait for our our fonts to all show up and we're going to kind of just scroll through and see if we can find a font that we like really well. I like a font called Cougarette. It's one of my favorites. It's quite thin. It's what you saw in the worksheet window and I use this font a lot. I just, I love the look of it and so you would switch to that. The other thing you need to know is that Cougarette is going to be, while it's a small font in the first place, it's still going to be at three inches, very large. When you place your, when you go to place your, your um, text in, you need to click on your shift key on your keyboard as well. To get it to work and you can see when I press my shift key it changed the mouse to a little plus sign I don't know if you can see it better over here but that's how you add the text then you draw an area that you want the text to go in and this is where you then have this great big huge clicker that's flashing away and you can type in your text and as you can see at number three that is pretty huge. No, it's not going to fit. So this is where you can take and you can size it on down to an area that will fit your block area. And this is okay, but <clears throat> if I still have to add my last name, I need it to be smaller still. So I think the smallest you can go here is half an inch. And that's, that's, um, I'm not sure that that's really correct in that, since this is four block, four inch block, it's, and it's, um, 0.500, I'm guessing that it is half an inch, but I'm not real set in stone on that. So, you know, that's basically it. But, um, then you can just take and put your mouse back in and add the rest of your text. And when you're done, I forget. I think you just click outside, actually. 
you just click outside and that will take care of that. So if you wanted to add more text, you add your shift and then you just take and you do it again. And as you can see, it's going to remember to save the size. You can bold it up if you want. You can center it. We'll try that. I will, as you can see, it centers to the middle of the box. And you can then add your text there, here. And so it's coming along rather nicely. And <clears throat> I'm just going to stop at that. And so what happens here is when I want to move this around, you have to remember it's applique. So to move this, you're kind of just dealing with the little idiosyncrasies that come with having to move stuff around in a quilt layout. And I'm sure there's probably a better way and I just don't know it <clears throat> as yet. Someday I, I probably will. So I can see here that this is not the same size as this is. This is 3.109 by 0634. This is 2.880. So I'm going to change this to 3.109. And that way it should be the same size as the uh, my, my original name. Now if I want to change the color, I can now do that with my um my my brush and I can come in here and I can choose a different color if I wanted each letter to be a different color I have to make a different text a different box you know for like the letter S and then a new box for the letter I you don't have the option here of changing each individual letter now, if you went into EQ Stitch and you were doing it there, you could do a different color there, but you cannot do it here. It's the same up here. If I if I think, oh, this gold doesn't show up very well, maybe I will try a different color. Maybe I'll go with the yellow and see how that works. And that really shows up nicely. So this gives you this. Uh, this is just. A small idea of what you can do with text and electric quilt. Um, they don't give you many options to like curve, put it on a curve or that kind of thing. So if you're wanting to do that, um, you need to do this, do that in different software. It's, it's like if you have digitizing software from Sheen Embroidery, you can do it there. I, I'm not quite sure. I. I I have EQ Stitch and I don't even use it, but um, I don't know if you can do it in EQ Stitch with the text. I can't imagine that you couldn't, but I don't know for sure. So um, with my digitizing software, I'll, I'll show you real quick how it's done there. This is a little sample I made up of the different fonts that I have on my computer. and as you can see there's quite a bit of different fonts that you can do in any and this is available in any digitizing software any digitizing software is going to have the ability to add text and fonts because adding text in machine embroidery is for some reason lettering is just a really big deal and i can see why because people add lettering to caps and hats and their clothing and um, all kinds of stuff. So um, I've never really been big into lettering and I've always just really shied away from it because I just never saw the point. But um, it can be quite fun. So let me show you a little bit of what can happen with text. As you can see here, this is the object properties of my digitizing software. This is Bernina Embroidery Designer Plus. And as you can see here, I have quite a few options to change this to like a text on a curve. So I would just click the button and click apply. And as you can see, this has moved to a curved area. And I can adjust this out here when I have 
when I want to on how I want to take it, but I can also do it a little bit here also. And as you can see, it moved just a slight bit. I could probably type in something 4.5. Let's see what that does. And as you can see, that makes it look a little bit nicer. And this is would be more something like what I would like. So <clears throat> I, I like having text on the curve. I think it's cool. So that's something you can think along the lines of too. If you have a, a machine embroidery, uh, an embroidery machine, you could try EQ Stitch and see what happens with it. Um, but for the most part, all I really wanted to show you how to do today was to add text and how you can audition the different things. You could move this down here if you want to keep it just in the red. And, um, and move it up to the line so that it's right there looking the same. And then maybe in the middle you add the, the date or the, um, the, your blog name or that kind of thing. Just to have fun, play around, and enjoy Electric Quilt with Text. We'll talk to you next month. Bye-bye for now. Oh, and happy anniversary, Electric Quilt. Thank you for the support today. I really appreciated your help with that little problem I had. Bye-bye for now.